That is the future of the automobile, at least according to Porsche. Now that's the Taycan Turbo S. It is, without giving too much away, one seriously manic ride. The question is, is it a real Porsche? The key to the Taycan is its electrifying personality. In the case of the Turbo S, the front electric motor with a single speed transmission generates 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. The more substantial rear motor, which uses a two speed transmission, pushes 449 horsepower and 405 pound feet of torque. The upshot is the electric motors combined to give the S an all wheel drive capability and the driver access to 616 horsepower and 700 pound feet of torque. You know, you should never ever misjudge the instant on power an electric vehicle delivers. This Taycan Turbo S will actually get you to 100K in 2.8 seconds. Now to put that into perspective, that is as fast as the 911 GT2 RS. When you stand on the gas, you take off down there, your stomach stays here and it takes a while for it to catch up. It really is every inch a Porsche in terms of its speed. In spite of the oversized rubber, the Taycan still manages to chirp the tyres on a hard launch. The reason is, when launch control is activated, the Turbo S goes into an overboost mode and the rear electric motor selects first gear. This action pushes the output to a cool 750 horsepower and 774 pound-feet of torque, and it does this from Rev1. The juice comes from a 93.4 kilowatt hour battery. Thanks to its unique 800 volt architecture, a nearly depleted battery accepts an 80% charge in an hour and a half using a DC fast charger, which makes a splash and go pit stop a quick venture. As for the driving range, well, Porsche says it's pegged at 307 kilometers. Now this is a very conservative number. When I pumped an 80% charge into the battery, the range meter was showing 327 kilometers. I get the sense the real range should be closer to 400K with a full charge. The cabin of this Taycan Turbo S is absolutely exquisite. Wonderful seats, wonderful materials, and of course, all the mod cons. There is, however, one very important button right here on the steering wheel. You push that and you activate the accelerator pedal-based regen braking. I prefer that setup simply because now I can control when the regen comes in and it makes it like a one-pedal drive. The system is so efficient have a guess how many years it takes to replace the brake pads. If you guessed once every six years, you're right on the money. To keep things flat, the Turbo S gets adaptive dampers and air springs. Depending on the drive mode selected, the damping rate and ride height change. Dropping the suspension at speed not only sharpens the handling, it also helps the aerodynamics. Next up is four-wheel steering. At speed, the response to input is millimeter precise without feeling darty. It also features rear axle torque vectoring and an optional active roll control system that keeps the Turbo S flatter than gravy on a plate. At the absolute limit, the flatness of the body's attitude feels almost eerie. One expects it to roll, nothing surfaces. That's the techie stuff. From the driver's perspective, the lot works to perfection and it does so invisibly. The only outward sign it's actually doing its thing is the fact the Turbo S dances through a corner while holding the driver's line with a sort of tenacity that belies description. We are, after all, talking about a 2,295 kilogram sedan. You know, the future does look very rosy indeed. That Taycan Turbo S is a proper Porsche by any standard you want to use. The mere fact that it's as fast as the 911 GT2 RS tells you all you really need to know. For Driving.ca, I'm Graham Fletcher, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram.